Hello and welcome Libra. This is your September 2023 general reading with myself Thomas Janak. You are watching Thomas's Tower readings. Please like, subscribe and share. And if you like my work, you can now buy me a coffee on www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. That's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash medium Thomas. Much appreciated. What we will do here, Libra, is we will divide the reading into sections uh, so it is a bit easier to actually understand and to follow the advice. That being said, um, life doesn't necessarily follow dividers so well, so should there be anything overlapping? Um, so be it, what we will do here, we will look at the overall energy for the months ahead. For the sign of Libra, before we then lastly, uh, sorry, before we then go into your emotional core, see if there's healing coming in um, or healing that needs to happen, if there's love coming in, that sort of stuff. Before we then lastly look at opportunities um, as they present themselves to you in the months of September 2023. Now, before we continue, dear Librans, I just always want you to remember that the sun is the ruler of the day, the moon is the ruler of the night, but you are the ruler of your own destiny. Are you ready, Libra? Let's have a look. Here we go. Let's see what we got. Wow. <laughs> Normally, I ask the guides to give me one energy, one card per topic if that makes sense and uh, you got four now the fourth one or the card that fell out is not even about the overall energy um, or any of the other topics here this is about a general understanding of where you are coming from this month and what the guys are showing me is that before we even talk about the overall energy for September, very likely you will already feel when you come to that video, because my belief is that the people who need to hear the messages will find the video. And so therefore, what the guides are saying is you have um, discomfort as a, as a, as a topic. Um, but it is more like an incoming energy. What the guides are saying is, at this point in time, you will very likely feel a bit um, almost debilitated. You will feel a bit of discomfort. But it has to do with the fact that the card itself has the number 14 on it. 1 and 4 is 5, number of change. You probably have had enough of change. Um, and while this is understandable, it may have made you um, feel or be in discomfort because there's just a lot that went on and you're not quite sure where you're going. Now, not trying to put you at ease directly or 100%, but it can only get better because September, dear Librans, is the month where um, we're going from summer to autumn, which means there is another change coming, but the ninth month of the year, September, is also, nine is the number of completion, the end of a cycle. So because of us going into autumn, the time where anything and everything that is no longer needed for you is attempting to fall by the wayside anyway. That is the nature of autumn. You know, leaves will fall off trees, things will die. Um, on their way to winter. Uh, so there is, this is about letting go um, as much as anything. So, so you're, you're feeling or being in discomfort because of change is on the way out. So things are already getting better. The guides are just asking you to acknowledge how you're truly feeling at this point in time. And the feeling that a lot of you will have when you actually come to the video is likely going to be a feeling of discomfort. Now let's look at the overall energy now. The overall energy is what is known as solar flares. Interesting word. Interesting concept anyway. So the solar flares are basically have to do with the energy of Leo, the energy of the sun. Now we're going 
from the energy of summer, which is the sun's element, you know, summer, hot, you know, sun, <laughs> into um, the energy of more like a, a grounding and grounded energy, which is autumn. Um, so solar flares affect the sun quite a bit. Solar flares affect our um, electromagnetic fields, therefore affect our auras. What you are asked, Libras, Librans, is to activate the strengths that the solar flares have, even though they can affect your aura. Um, it is because they, bomb they bombard the sun because there's just a lot of energy behind them. What you're being asked, therefore, again, it's symbolism. What you're being asked is to understand that the solar flares energy, while at times debilitating and, and tiring, if that makes sense, have extra power, pushiness in them, and you are asked for the month of September to activate that inner pushiness that is not necessarily Libra strength, because obviously you're looking for balance and harmony. Balance and harmony are not super easy to come by. Um, at any given state, but we're moving into uh, um, autumn, you know, beginning with the um, autumn equinox on September the 23rd. There is an extra video about that in uh, on that channel here. Bottom line is you need to be a little bit pushy to get through the months. What you are, what you cannot really do this month, Librans, is to take things super easy. It's just not the energy that warrants it. So. To be fair, when it comes to the overall energy here, I don't get anything massively difficult coming your way either. I just get that um, you need to allow yourself to push through things rather than um, give in to things, if that makes sense, right? It also has to do with the fact that your, your solar flare card here had the number 17. 1 and 7 is 8. 8 is actually a number of stumbling blocks to a large extent. So therefore, if you see things from a different point of view, you will topple over the 8 and it becomes the infinite sign or infinity. So you need to push through. You need to probably look at things differently to what you normally do to make them smooth again. But what is required of you this month is for you to be 100% there and deal with stuff. Hence, you activate the power of the solar flares, right? In any case, when it comes to your emotional um, core, how you feel emotionally, I do not get that you need to have a lot of energy to heal. As a matter of fact, you have, you have Vesta, which is... A flame that is always on. So when it comes to emotions, while you are being asked to reflect a little, your job when it comes to how you feel and therefore how you manifest um, progression in a relationship or how you manifest a relationship per se, you need to understand that your fire is always on. You are always willing to embrace the energy of a partner, which is what this is about here. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to go out of your way. You're already embracing the idea. And so should you be in a relationship, understand that you're bringing quite a lot to that relationship. And you don't have to go out of your way to do more and more and more just to please someone, right? And therefore, again, you are the sign of, harmons and, uh, of harmony and balance. Um, you just have to allow yourself to invite it into the relationship rather than being the one that is trying to carry it on your own. Conversely, if you are manifesting a relationship, make sure you're manifesting a relationship that sort of works from the get-go, where there isn't all that much um, energy about tweaking things. And the reason why this is, is because obviously on your card you have the number 3 and 2, 32, 3 and 2 is 5, 5 is the number of change, but 5 is also the number of communication. So what the guides are saying, it is quite normal 
that from time to time in any partnership, any relationship, um, things, things um, have to be allowed to change a little so that there can't be any um, static, if that makes sense, right? Um, but in your energy here this month, in September 2023, for the sign of Libra, it is all about communication, right? So make sure that you seek communication rather than seeking arguments or being um, too in your face about it, if that makes sense, right? So that is really, really important. And then lastly, we will look at opportunities as they present themselves to you in the months of September 2023 for the sign of Libra. And what you have is the fourth house. Now, the fourth, I can't pronounce that number, well, the fourth house is the sign of Cancer. And what that means is that Cancer comes here, Cancerians do come here, to sort of um, look at whatever happened in their father's side of the family, um, which is the energy of feeling at home somewhere and not being too frightened by um, or too disturbed by masculinity. The reason why they're bringing this up is because um, Cancerian energy is, um, or Cancer by default, is governed by the moon, which is your emotion. So we're moving all away from the emotion into opportunities. And what the guides are basically saying in a roundabout way, that in order for you to figure out where to go with regards to your growth, it could also mean that whatever sustains you financially, if that makes sense, even though money is not a spiritual currency, cannot be manifested per se, um, is to allow yourself to see things from an emotional point of view. So instead of going for the big price, so if you are a person that says, you know, I want to grow, I want to explore the world, I want to travel somewhere, don't go where it is the most convenient and the easiest. Go where you feel, this is my energy. This is where my tribe is, if that makes sense. So anything to do with opportunities, you should assess and access from a point of emotions, right? How would I feel if I embraced that energy rather than what can that energy bring to me? So if this, so, so the point is, anything you're trying to do with regards to being sustained, even though sustainability is the overall energy that the month has for you, that sustainability has no bearing and should have no bearing on opportunities and growth because that's just not how this flows. When it comes to opportunities coming your way, you will want to feel welcome and accepted in that energy that you're actually seeking out, right? So this is much more about feeling at home somewhere, uh, which is the fourth house being at home, um, than necessarily being at home because the number of your card is the number 42, 4 and 2 is 6. Now 6, by default, is the number of the element of ether, which is not an element that, that you find in astrology anymore here. But um, ether is the number of glue, uh, which means what you really want is to look for opportunities that lead to a place like home, where you are, where it is okay to spend a lot of time and and hang on to for quite some time, right? So this is all about really um, feeling your way towards opportunities that lead you to maybe a semi-permanent home, if that makes sense. So the reason why the guys are asking you never to look for a home is because, you know, logically speaking, we are here on this on this planet um, to learn detachment. We have about 26,000 years to do that because there's a south node and a north node. And, uh, you know, if they ever were to meet, it would take 26,000 years for them to, 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 to meet one another if one goes to the other, if that makes sense. So we're not here to have a fixed position that makes our home home, if that makes sense. So don't be too focused on staying somewhere for good, if that makes sense. But at the same time, in your energy here is the energy of home. So 
you should feel at home somewhere, even though it may turn out to be not permanent. And the reason why this comes up here strongly is simply because you are Libra. Uh, and as a Libra, what you really want is balance and harmony. So ch embracing change, if that makes sense, is not necessarily Libra's um, strongest point, but Libra, you, you yourself, are the seventh sign governed by the seventh house. Seven is the highest number of protection and healing. So you always look for that element where you feel quite safe. All the guides are saying to you, this really isn't what you should be thriving for or looking for when it comes to opportunities, because while opportunities are not necessarily fleeting, um, thinking that everything has to be perfect is just not how to go about manifesting and, and inviting in opportunities, right? So I hope this made sense. Um, that's all we got time for here, if that makes sense. Um, thank you so much for watching. And always remember, the sun is the ruler of the day. The moon is the ruler of the night. But you are the ruler of your own destiny. Thank you so much for watching. See you all next month. Remember to like, subscribe and share. Bye-bye.